All right, this is just going to be a quick video on setting up the four jaw chuck, uh, quick and easy. I know uh, John Mills, uh, Double Boost, he, he's going to do a whole video series of this, um, but I've showed this off in a couple other videos. People seem to like it, so uh, we're basically pulling that little nugget out of the videos and putting it in this. And um, this is just going to be a quick and easy way to set the four jaw up to be almost dead nuts um, right out of the gate, and then you can just tweak it from there. Now, a four jaw chuck, as you know, is well they can be four jaw scrolls but most four jaw chucks are independent jaw chucks meaning that each jaw moves independently of the other uh, which means that you have to dial in your part but it's a very versatile chuck it'll allow you to turn eccentric so it'll also allow you to turn square stock um, and it will allow you to remove a piece, do some sort of other operation on there, and put that piece back in and dial it in pretty much back to where it was. So if you are to own a chuck, only one chuck for your lathe, make sure it's a four jaw. First thing you notice on these four jaws, you'll see these lines here. They're not there for decoration. These are basically an eyeball gauge to set these jaws um, at the same distance from each other to get you started. So uh, let's grab a round pot here. And we're just going to use this random piece of aluminum here. And we are uh, one inch, pretty close to one inch there. So what we're going to do is basically look at our jaws here, take a scale, put it across, and see where one inch ends up. Okay. And we're going to move our jaws in to each other. And this is just the first eyeball there. Nothing, doesn't have to be anything special. On this lathe, it's actually easier if I pull the bowl gear, it kind of puts everything in neutral here. And now I'm referencing the where these jaws are that I just moved on to this ring. And we're going to kind of get them all in there. Roughly the same spot. And so you can see we're off there. So I'm going to roughly half the distance. Come into about there, come over here, come into about there. So basically I'm looking at this jaw here. Now if you could tell this line is going to be roughly equal with the inside of this edge and that gives us pretty close to one inch. Okay, so then we're going to take our part Pop it in there, and we're going to put our handle on the top, and we're going to reference where that handle is pointing, and we're going to give it about a quarter of a turn and see that lock down. Okay, so I can put this a quarter of a turn, and that would roughly lock down. So now you can see we're still out, but we're pretty close. Okay, now we're going to set up our dial indicator, and I'm going to get you right on top of this chop. Okay, so we got you on top here, and we're uh, basically going to set up our indicator here. And uh, these nogas make it a hell of a lot easier, especially on smaller lays. So what we want is uh, roughly on center with the stock. doesn't have to be perfect, and pretty much parallel. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just going to put some pressure on that indicator. And you can see we're off by a fair bit. Okay. Now this method really only works if you can actually reach around the chuck to reach both sides and it works a, a lot easier if you have two chuck keys. Um, just be sure to make the second one smaller than the first because uh, it's really tight back there. I, I should really cut the handles off of this but I, I just haven't. Um, anyway, so we're going to turn the chuck and basically what we want to do is find the lowest reading which is right about there. So at that point we're going to zero our indicator at our lowest spot and we're going to turn our chuck and we're going to see what our highest comes up to. So our highest is about 70, 72 and a half, 73. You see, yeah, 0, 73. 
So we want to half that reading. So half of 70 is 35, half of 3 is 1 and a half, 35, 36 and a half. So we're going to go turn our chalk until our reading hits about 36 and a half. Again, not 100% critical if it's dead nuts. So right there with 36 and a half. Okay, at that point, at our halfway point, we want to zero our indicator. Okay? So our indicator is at zero. You can see that there. All right. Now, we want to turn it until our neck, our jaw, turn it towards us until our next jaw here is parallel with the 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 lathe is 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 uh, parallel with the with the ways. So basically, we want this jaw pointed straight out at us. So we're going to go ahead and do that, right about there. Now at that point, what we want to do is we want to bring this in, work the the jaws back and forth until this reading goes to zero. So in this case, we're low. So we want the part to come towards us. So this is where the two chuck keys comes in handy because you can just work the jaws against each other. Loosen this one and tighten this back one until we get to zero. All right, now we want to go to our next jaw here. Same thing. I'm going to loosen this front jaw and tighten this back jaw until we get to zero. Now, if you're not dead nuts, you should be pretty damn close. So right there, right away, we're off by two. That's it. And that could be the stock, that could be anything, but we can get that tighter. So we're off by two. So if we want, we look, that right there is our low spot. We want the part to come towards us, so we gotta tighten up this jaw here, just by a little bit. Again, low spot over here. Now you can leave, if you can still reach around the part, if your low spot ends up being right on your jaw, all you have to basically do is half that reading. So we're getting two there, so if I tighten this up until I read one, right there I'm within a couple of tenths. I don't know if you can see that. I actually have a tenth reading indicator. We'll put, we'll put that right on this and see what we get. Okay, so each one of these lines is a tenth. And you can see we're off by maybe within two steps, we got it within half a thousand, okay? Within about four to five. Now there's a little bit of variation in the stock itself. It might not be perfectly round. You know, you could be running up against a little piece, but you know, within, within two steps there, we got a well within a half. So you can see it's pretty easy to do if you can just reach across. Um, and do it that way, and just work your work your jaws um, off each other. So at this point here, let's see if we can get it. Let's see how true we can get it. Why not, huh? Start chasing tents. So Right there is high. So there you go. So I just took out that little bit of tenth. Now we're within, you can see right there, we were within. There's a little variation in the bar itself, probably a scratch or a ding, but we're one, two, three. We're within three. We're within three tenths, so um, you know, as far as uh, you know, having to do any kinds of work, you can get it super close with a with a four jaw, uh, depending on you know how how accurate an indicator you have. Um, but you can see with just a few with a few moves here and there, you can get this right right into shape. Uh, and you know, the more you do it, the easier it is.
Um, and like I said, if, if you're only going to buy one chuck, um, make sure it's a four jaw. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we're going to have another uh, one coming for you. Uh, next one's going to be a project uh, that is already done. I just have to edit it. So, um, hopefully this will tide you over for a day.